One man is on the loose after a police standoff. Two people fainted. Seeing the sidewalk underneath all of this snow is not only nice, it's mandatory. Financial aid applicants are on the rise because of the economy. This hair salon wants to cut out the struggles of unemployment. Hear what services you can get for free. Many employers are pushing job seekers to their website for more detailed career information, leaving those who came to this job fair expecting to fill out a job application dissatisfied. They're making way for a new generation, the LED TV. It offers less energy consumption, no mercury, no lead, and takes up less space. As you can see, it's smaller than the remote that controls it. Some people are saving money by hopping on their bicycles. The excitement was really, really high in the room before, during, and after Barack Obama took the oath of office. How federal dollars will help one local health clinic serve its community better. She joins us live from Country View Estates. Renetta, what's going on out there now? Well, Nicole, police believe that a man was inside these apartments armed here on Keys Court in Country View. Chris Weaver says he is now gone and could be somewhere in the area or headed home to Chicago. Weaver says he is a 24-year-old African-American male. His name is Justin Cook. Now, earlier, Weaver says police responded to a dispute where shots were fired. 26-year-old Aaron Harrison, who is the victim, says Cook arrived at his apartment on Mount Court, pointed a gun to his head and hit him. Harrison says Cook ran away and he followed him in a car. That's when Cook fired two shots at him. Harrison, who says he was formerly friends with Cook, says he was about to move back to his hometown, Chicago, Illinois. We had just moved the furniture out of my house. I'm actually going back to Chicago. Like, I play professional ball in Europe. In the process, my car still was innocent and I had nothing to do with this. And I, and I, wanted, and I just wanted to replace the front and fix it. Now, 46-year-old Wanda Harris says many small children were out during the incident. Now, police are processing the area as a crime scene. They are letting residents along Keys Court back inside their apartments just to gather items like food and wa water and then return back out. Also, police, once they are done, they will let those residents back in on Keys Court. Weaver says security will be enforced around the complex, and Chicago police will also be alerted in case Cook decides to return back to his home. Town. We're live on the south side of Lafayette, Renata Dubose, News Channel 18. 26-year-old Derek Lippert was killed Friday night at 2312 North 19th Street. Tanya Bamford lives three doors down. She says on the night Lippert was killed, she didn't hear a sound. It was actually pretty quiet. Uh, it was around about 8, 8.30 when my dog started going crazy in the backyard. And then next thing I know... I realize that there's cops outside. The affidavit of probable call states 25-year-old Jeremy D. Kanoy killed Lippert with a baseball bat. Lippert also had a stab wound. Kanoy and Lippert have been friends since childhood. Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Department's records show Kanoy with four prior arrests. Three of those deal with alcoholic consumption. Bamford says she recalls a different Kanoy. I was shocked. I was really shocked because he seemed really nice. I went and suspected him at all wanting to harm someone. You know, he was a young kid. He was, you know, always bubbly. Relatives of Lippert could not be reached at this time, but his assumed MySpace page shows the 26-year-old left his home in Monrovia for Lafayette for the holiday. His final hours at this house also came as a shock to Mark Luckenbill, who has delivered mail in the area for four years. I love working this part of town. Everybody's so friendly. Um, and I would say this is probably unusual. It's the first time I've experienced anything like this. Neighbors say they sometimes hear gunshots on the other side of Schuyler Avenue and witness the occasional village pantry robbery. But they agree that this remains a safe neighborhood. This part is not a bad neighborhood. It's not. That we'd like to forget about. Even though it was hard, Tecumseh Bend resident Bill Patterson shared with us the devastation from January and February floods where more than five feet of water from the Tippecanoe River filled the insides of these homes. I got out with the clothes on my back and that was it. The floods hit retired Army veteran Steve Slifer too. He rushed to help organize cleanup efforts when he learned Purdue University students would help. I just jumped. My previous Army experience told me I need to do that. That's what I did. Coordinate. Get people to the site. Help my neighbor. Students with the resident assistant program say they'll take away more than just a lesson on weeding, shoveling dirt, and cleaning homes. 
it's great to be involved in the local community and get a little bit outside of just our zone on campus. I really did not think it was going to be this fun, but it's fun. I'm glad I, <laughs> I got to plant moms and stuff like that. Just the satisfaction that helps somebody out. Um, I know that uh, he lost a lot of different things. Many of the residents in Tecumseh Bend live here year long. Others are seasonal. But after the floods earlier this year, some did not return. We lost a lot because they tore their houses down and they ran out of money. All done. Now that some of the work is complete, memories of high water and home damage can slowly be laid to rest. I don't think we'll be done this year. It's going to go on until next year. But with the help of the kids that come from Purdue, this is wonderful. What these kids did today would take me a month to do.